Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Justin and today I'm gonna to show you my stock portfolio, go through all my positions, show you what I'm up at year to date for some of the benchmarks like the S&P 500, for example. And I wanna talk about a couple of stocks in my portfolio and one of those is Google stock. I started buying Google in July, 2022, so almost a year ago. Uh, fast forward to today, it's around $130. My cost base is around $115. So what are my thoughts about Google right now? Do I want to just keep and just hold it? Do I want to sell it? Do I want to buy more? I'll talk about that in this video here today. If you get some value out of this video, go ahead and smash the thumbs up button. And if you don't get value, just smash it anyway. Helps out the channel a ton and I really do appreciate it. So let's just jump right into this one. All right, so you see my portfolio here on the screen right now. Off to the right, you can see the rate of return. So this is January 1, 2023 through August 4, 2023. I'm up 43% year to date. Uh, you can all see that down here. Uh, against Russell 2000, which is up 12%. S&P 500 is up 17%. Uh, so that's all great. I'm really happy how the portfolio has performed this year. Uh, but, you know, that doesn't happen every single year. Um, so you definitely take these, um, you know, great uh, years and hopefully it continues to go throughout the remainder of the year. We'll just kind of see how that plays out. Uh, I will mention there are, you know, several stocks I did sell out of already this year that I had some really big gains on. So Netflix, for example, had some big gains there. Meta as well. Uh, I sold a bunch of home builder stocks. There's about five or six of those that I was up uh, pretty big on too. So uh, again, I've done very well this year. Hopefully it continues, but this is kind of where I'm at right now as far as my positions go. So I have, you know, Ally, Wix, uh, Great Lakes, m and and so on. So you can read through those on the screen if, if you so desire. Uh, but I want to talk about a couple of them in here because, you know, the, the market really, I think, hasn't totally recovered from last year. I think SP 500 was down around 20%. Right now, it's up 17%, so it's pretty darn close, um, but hasn't fully recovered. And it'll be interesting uh, through the re remainder of the year um, with interest rates still elevated. You know, it seems like the jobs are still doing pretty well. The jobs reports came out last week, uh, definitely slowing down. But uh, even with the high interest rates, the economy is still doing really well. And people still seem to have some money that they're pumping into the stock market, which is still keeping the stock market, you know, um, still rolling at this time. Hopefully that continues, but you never know. Um, so a couple stocks I want to talk about. So before I get to Google, I do want to talk about this one down here. So Air Transportation Service Group, uh, ticker symbol ATSG. That was my most recent stock that I actually bought. A smaller company, about a $1.5 billion market cap. This is the largest lessor of planes in the entire world. In fact, they lease out a bunch of planes to the government, to DHL, to Amazon, for example. So these are planes that they typically buy. They're 15 to 20 years old, usually Boeing-type planes, and then they just kind of refabricate them um, and spruce them up and then become transportation uh, planes. And so, uh, again, they're the largest ones that do that in the world. And they just came out with earnings this past week, and they were up over 10% after earnings. Uh, so only a stock for about a week can be an up 16%, uh, pretty good. Uh, we'll just kind of see how, how that trends there. Uh, another one, so Miller Knoll uh, is one that I am um, actually going to sell. Uh, that one I'm up about 42%. Uh, so my, my uh, cost basis is 14 Today, it's trading around $20. This is a, a company that is a furniture uh, store company. So Miller and Knoll actually combine. They merge to make this, this large furniture store company. Um, and at this point, you know, I just don't think that there's a lot of runway, uh, certainly in the near term for them. So that, that's one I'm, I'm most likely going to sell uh, as well. Another one that I recently bought was Paramount. You know, I think a lot of the streaming companies are very uh, undervalued, I guess you could say right now. I think there's a, a pretty good size margin of safety across the board on a lot of these streaming companies. Uh, we've seen a lot of recovery in Netflix stock, certainly this year. Uh, but across the board, to me, that streaming industry 
um, seems like there's some really good value there um, overall. And I think Paramount is, is one of those companies that uh, has just been pushed down way too much and their stock is trading around, you know, 15 uh, or excuse me, $16. My cost basis is 15. So about 3% um, on that one. I've only owned that one for actually just a few days, uh, if you can believe that. But uh, that, that one there. And then uh, let's also talk about... Uh, you know, True Panion, this is one that uh, I'm about 27% on. I'd say it's trading at $31. Cost based on this one is $24. This is a, a company that is in the pet insurance area. In fact, uh, they're the largest ones in the world that do what they do. They're based out of Washington, and they've just been absolutely hammered this past year. Inflation has hurt this business considerably. So uh, what they try to do is they project out a year in advance on what they think that vet costs are going to be because they're going to be reimbursing the vet costs from their their clients. And typically, vet costs actually compound or, or they they grow faster than the typical inflation rate. So the you know feds want to keep it around 2 2.5%, or vet costs typically go up 6% per year. So almost two to three times as much. While with inflation, that 6% has gone to 15%, and that has just absolutely crushed Trupanion. And also something that uh, I didn't necessarily understand completely when I bought into them, but now that I own them, I know more, uh, is that some of the states actually regulate these insurance companies, and you can't just raise your rates. You actually have to ask permission. Uh, one of the reasons why the stock had fallen so much is that California – actually deny true pain in the full increase that they asked for. So just interesting business. Uh, I think there's a huge long runway there, um, but uh, they're certainly hurting a lot because the inflation uh, short term, you know, it's definitely painful for them, but long term, they should do pretty well. Um, another one here, uh, you know, before I get to Google, I guess it's Great Lakes Dredge. This is one of 50% on uh, here in the last uh, just two months. This is a really micro cap stock. They're in the dredging industry. And uh, I just felt that the stock just got pushed down way too much. This is a company that typically has a backlog of 700 million, fell down to 300 million. Now they've got that up to in the 400 millions. In fact, if they, they win all the bids that are out there right now, it's almost a billion dollars in backlog. They, they won't win all those, uh, but they have that potential right there. And I think over the next year, uh, we're going to see a lot of growth where this past year has just been very, very problematic for them. Uh, so the stock price is moving in the right direction on that front. So uh, let's talk about Google. Uh, so like I said before the beginning of this video, uh, I bought it about a year ago. So I started buying in July 2022. I think I bought the stock for the next like month or two and then kind of stopped. So my cost base is 115 Right now, it's roughly $128 uh, right now. So I'm up about 12% uh, over the past year, and it's, it's kind of interesting. So I went back and I looked what my original projection on, on Google was. So I had to go pull uh, my my projection uh, or my forecast uh, from a year ago. So I was kind of kind of see how things have kind of played out. So um, in 2022, I had projected 295 billion dollars, and then this year I was projecting 335. Uh, billion dollars. And uh, you can see here kind of the growth rates off to the right here. So over a 10-year period, I, I thought they would grow around 12% per year on the top line. I thought that the operating margins would kind of stabilize around 30%. So also be an, an operating income uh, CAGR of around 12%. And so that came out to be intrinsic value, about $111. So uh, technically, I bought the stock a little higher than intrinsic value, and that's not what I typically do. In fact, I try to get a large margin of safety. I mean, best case scenario, uh, getting a 50% margin of safety uh, is the best route just because there's so many assumptions that you make or I make when I'm trying to project all these forecasts. I could be wrong on sales. I could be wrong on operating income. There's a lot of stuff that can happen that I could just be wrong on, uh, good or bad. And so that margin of safety protects you. But uh, you know, one thing that, that Warren Buffett said uh, at his annual meeting, I want to say it was two years ago, and someone asked him, you know, why are you buying Apple stock when it doesn't seem like there's to be, you know, much margin of safety in that? And he just said, you know, 
it, when you can project or forecast a company pretty well and you feel very comfortable where they're going to be, you know, five years plus into the future, you don't really need a huge margin of safety. And when I looked at Google specifically, you know, that kind of fit that mold for me. So even though I wasn't getting a great uh, price when I bought it, um, I, I still felt that, you know, it was a great company that should be compounding, you know, around 10 to 15 percent, even at the price that I bought them for. And, uh, you know, obviously I've had it for a year and it's up 12 percent. So it's about the 10 percent uh, compound rate the IRR that I had uh, projected. But that's one year we'll just kind of see uh, how, how it plays out from there. And so, you know, for me, I, I just want to just hold Google. That was one, a, a long-term play for me. I was not going to buy and sell it right away. I mean, if it would go up to $200 in the next couple months, I would sell. Uh, it wouldn't make any sense at that point to keep it. Uh, but here recently, I decided to do another uh, revaluation of Google. So I try to do this every so often with the stocks that I own to see if anything has changed. And this is uh, kind of what I came up with. So you can see it's a little different format. The one before was a 10-year. This is a, a five-year uh, forecast. So I'm, I'm thinking about you know top-line growth around 15%, operating income around 17%, uh, multiple 20, gives me an intrinsic value of 132. So right now, uh, just kind of like last year, it's trading at what I think the intrinsic value of, of what I think the stock is at. So uh, for me and where Google is at, I, I'm just going to keep it. I'm just going to let it run. This is not one that I'm concerned about. I don't I don't have really anything I look at and say, oh, I, I can't forecast. And it was one of the reasons why I sold Meta. And I'm a huge Zuckerberg fan. I think Meta is just a wonderful company. But with all the money they're putting into AI, all the money they're putting into the metaverse and the other stuff that they're doing, I just had just a just difficulty trying to forecast what I thought earnings would be, not just in a year or two, but certainly five years down the road. And it got to a point where I was just like, okay, um, I'd rather get into a stock that I uh, can forecast the, the numbers better and really understand what the intrinsic value of the stock price is. Uh, so th that's, uh, you know, so it's not the case, same case scenario as Google for me as, as Meta. Um, but I just kind of want to share those, those thoughts there. So we kind of go back to my portfolio here. Uh, you can see that Ally Financial is still my largest position. Um, you know, that one hasn't really done well for me. I've had that one for over a year now. Uh, but I think long term, that's still going to play out real well. It's the largest online bank in the entire world. Uh, it's a bank that is uh, their, their, their car loans, which they're really known for. That part of their portfolio is getting smaller and smaller quarter over quarter, and they're getting into other types of loans, whether it's real estate, credit cards, things like that. Uh, Wix actually came with the earnings this past week and did really well. Uh, I'm up about 37% on that one. I did sell some calls on this one at $105. Uh, about two months out, so we'll see if it gets called away for me or not. Uh, but this is certainly a company that uh, I, I really like. They're in the uh, website space where you can go on, actually create your own website on their platform uh, for your business. You can sell your products through them. Uh, so again, I, I think that's they have a huge runway. And a lot of these stocks here, that's kind of how I'm looking at them. Now, some of them are just pure value plays. So like Advanced Auto Parts, for example, that was one that I bought about a month ago. And I got a lot of uh, flack on this one from some of the comments on the video of, you know, saying that, uh, you know, Warren Buffett wouldn't buy this. But how I look at it is, even though they're not, you know, a strong competitive advantage, maybe like an AutoZone or O'Reilly's, I think the stock has been beaten down way too much. It's still a company that's growing, you know, two, three percent on the top line, still has around a six to eight percent operating income. Uh, so even based on that, the stock to me has just, uh, has a lot of value in it. I think it's it's around a 40% margin of safety, even here today, about 35 to 40%. Um, you know, another one that came out this week that 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 did really well was, you know, Stanley Black & Decker. This is another really value play for me. This is a company that owns a ton of different power tools from DeWalt, uh, Stanley, obviously Black & Decker, uh, Cub Cadet. They own tons of different power tools. And obviously when... Uh, the economy in general is not doing great. I think we're, we're doing much better than what a lot of people thought we would be at right now. But with inflation, 
you know, a lot of power tools and uh, products that they sell just haven't been uh, flying off the shelf as well as what they thought. And they'd built up their inventory so much by the end of 2021, they really made a lot of poor management decisions that put them into this place. And the stock fell all the way down to around $75 a share. My cost base is 86. Right now it's around $98. Today's price, I'm at 14% on this one. Uh, I think I have an intrinsic value of around $120 on this particular stock um, from what I, I recall. Um, so they still, I think, have a lot of growth to go. Now they have taken on quite you know more debt over the past year. So I'm probably going to go revalue this one and kind of see where it's at. And, and uh, see if, um, you know what my thoughts are on that one. All right, guys. So that's my portfolio in a nutshell uh, as of right now. So again, I'm up around 43% uh, year to date, and that's just like seven, eight months in that, and that's it. So um, it's not something to you know hold your hat on or anything like that. And hopefully, it continues to do well through this year. Uh, and as uh, I find uh, value in stocks, I'm still finding a lot of. Uh, stocks that have really good value. I mean, even here in the last two months from Great Lake Dredge to uh, Air Transportation Services Group, uh, Paramount, uh, I still finding really good value in some stocks. Now, I think a lot of other stocks have really bounced back. Uh, a lot of these, I would say, growth stocks or even a lot of the tech stocks have, have bounced back so much. I think a lot of those uh, don't look like they have as great a value as they did maybe six months ago. Uh, but I still think if you're looking in, in specific areas, you can still find some really good value in, in stocks on depending on, on the industry that, that they're in. Um, so we'll see how the rest of the year plays out. But just kind of curious from you guys, I mean, what is your favorite stock in your portfolio right now? Is one of those Google? Uh, what are your thoughts on Google? Are you planning to sell, hold? Are you bullish on it, not bullish on it? I'd love to hear from you guys in the comment section. Uh, if you want to support the channel, I'll drop a link down below to my Patreon. You get access to valuation templates that I show, uh, along with getting access to my Discord channel. And then I also do Patreon only posts on uh, the Patreon site as well. So if you're interested, go check that out. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I'll catch you guys on the other side. Take care and God bless.